and welcome back to Program Automatic Mode Part 2. In this part, I will take you through the LR Time Lapse workflow, uh, color enhancements in Adobe Lightroom Classic, and then object removal using Adobe Photoshop. For anyone who's not familiar with LR Time Lapse, it is probably one of the best software on the market right now for uh, time lapse post production and it's now in its uh, sixth edition which includes support for the Apple M1 silicon as well as PC and the old Intel Max. So open up LR time lapse and then navigate in the bottom left corner to where your files have been saved. Now these would be the actual raw files straight from the camera, no pre-processing or anything. And then on the left side you can see that there's going to be a visual display of the actual time lapse sequence. So then you set your keyframes. These are really important. These are markers where you are going to be later developing those single frames. So you can see here that ideally you want to place a keyframe where there is a change in the actual light of the scene. So when there's a noticeable change, I want to put a keyframe there or thereabouts within that area. This is going to help with the sort of transition and the sort of uh, Lightroom development of the photos. So I'm just going to skim through quickly and then save the files down and then you can see I mean it's already fairly smooth there's really not much to do with this but we're going to save it down and then we're going to take all the files straight into Lightroom click the import button on the bottom left you can see all the files now loading up in the top right corner we want to select LRT keyframes so this is now going to display the keyframes that we previously just set in LR time lapse, and now we can process those single frames the way that you would process any other photo in Lightroom. You have the full features available. Make sure that you have these two areas selected. That's going to help you avoid clipping in black and white areas of the photo. So we go through very quickly and we make whatever adjustments that we feel that are actually necessary for these photos. It's going to be different, obviously, for every time that's we do. In this section, I'm just going to select the lens correction and enable profile correction. We can also crop the images to get rid of any unwanted areas or to straighten the images up. So down here in the bottom left, we're going to select develop settings and sync settings. So I'm basically transferring whatever edits I've made from one raw file onto the next raw file. And then I select that next raw file and then I make whatever adjustments I need to make for that file. And then I do the same sequence again, sync up to the next frame, the following frame and again and make whatever micro adjustments I need to make within that raw file and so on and so on until I get to a point where I feel that maybe some noise reduction is necessary because we had the camera set to ISO 1600 reasonably high so around this point towards the end of the time lapse I'm going to start to add some kind of simple basic noise reduction and then we need to save all these files down so save metadata to files let Lightroom save everything and then we can click full sequence so you can see here that the only frames that have been color adjusted were the keyframes that we selected in LR time lapse so when we hit reload, LR time lapse is going to import all the color adjustments that we just made in Lightroom into LR time lapse. So you can see that the top frame, you can see that it's pulled in all the XML data from Lightroom. You can see that the color adjustments have been made. And if you click on the frame just below, you can see that no color adjustments have been made so far. When we select auto transition, what LR time lapse is going to do is that it's going to take all the color changes that we made on the keyframes 
and it's going to apply those changes to the frames in between the keyframes. So it's going to calculate a smooth transition throughout the time lapse scene. This is the perfect software uh, for day to night or night to day time lapse sequences. So we now have a visual display, a visual preview, and we have this small area here where there's a small change in light, which we can fix quite easily using the visual deflicker tool. This is a very, very good tool. So you can see here where the green line is, that is basically giving us a preview of how this whole scene is going to be smoothed out. It's going to eliminate any flicker that there might still be within the time-lapse scene. And we have the multi party flicker to make it more accurate. And there is actually accuracy settings to be less more or just on default. The smoothing is set quite high anyway. So we're going to click on apply. And we're going to leave that for a while to let that uh, process. And you can see now that the scene is just being smooth or leveled out. And when we run through, we get to that small area and it's pretty much gone. So now we can export the entire scene. So click on export and just navigate to where you want it to be saved. And it opens up this uh, export render video dialog. And you have various options here. You've actually got a really good set of options. You've got ProRes, you've got H.265, 264. You've got output size. Uh, you've got, I, I normally keep it on source. So it's whatever the, the frame size is that's come out of the camera. But you can scale down to 4K, 8K, 6K. Um, really have got a good set of options there. And quality, you can set it to ultra high, which will be uh, color sampling 444. And then you have some uh, various other features like you have some, uh, you can crop it down to 16 by nine aspect ratio. I normally leave it off. I just actually want it exactly how it came out of the camera. You can apply some emotion blur, you can apply some sharpening, you can apply copyright information. You've got a whole load of features here. I generally want to do most of that in post-production myself anyway, so I literally just want uh, exactly how it's come out of the camera, plus the obviously the color enhancements that we've done in Lightroom and the, the de-flickering. So we now hit export and render and we just wait for LR time lapse to render the scene. So this now gives us a visual display of the actual output. So you can see here there's two objects in the foreground that I really want to get rid of. And unfortunately that there's that's when the floodlights came on and it's kind of ruined the whole thing. So as well as rendering out a actual video file, we also have the JPEG sequence and it's the JPEG sequence that we really want to concentrate on here. So there was a little jump at the beginning, which I managed to find and I got rid of. So I'm going to delete those frames. And I'm going to do the same for the end part as well. I'm just going to take the frames that had that, the floodlights, I'm just going to get rid of them because we don't need them. This is now part of the post-processing. So we've done the LR time-lapse and now we want to take one of these frames, the first frame, we're going to take it into Photoshop and we're going to try and get rid of these two foreground objects, these two floodlights. So by doing that, I'm going to select Actions in Photoshop. It's going to give it a name, whatever name you want, and you call it Time Lapse Object Removal. And I'm going to click on Record and you can see here on the Actions, it's now Actions Panel, it's now recording. So basically, whatever you do now, Photoshop is going to basically record and remember everything that you've done on this uh, image. So we're going to do a mask, we're going to hold down Control Shift to maintain the mask and we're going to select a mask around these two objects. And then we're going to go to Fill, Content Aware Fill, click OK and those objects will be removed. And then we're going to select save a copy. So now create a new folder to save these new uh, frames into. You don't want to overwrite the old frame, so create a completely separate folder. Name it however you feel necessary. 
and then make sure that the quality is 12, hit OK. And now these can be any files you want, PNG, bitmaps, TIFFs, and then stop the actions in the Actions panel. Then we're going to click on Image Processor. We're going to select the folder where those frames have been saved. And then we're going to click on OK. Next, we're going to navigate to the folder that we just created so that we're going to save the new frames into this folder. We're going to check save as JPEG, uncheck resize to fit, make sure the quality is 12. We're going to click on run action and we're going to navigate down to the action that we literally just recorded in Photoshop and then we're going to hit run and it's going to go through every single frame that's in that folder and it's going to apply the exact same action that we actually did on the first frame and you can see here we've given it a little bit of time to go through and you can see that all the frames those objects have now been removed from all the frames not perfect but we can possibly fix some things uh, later in post-production Coming up in part three, we're going to take you through the Adobe Premiere workflow and then the exact same workflow in Adobe After Effects and then the final render and export.